What's up guys, so here with week 2 of the PU Battleground. Uh, if you guys missed last week's battle, basically this is a short 6 week tournament where uh, we have a bunch of tier 4 and tier 5 stuff with a little bit of tier 3 mixed in. Uh, just to basically test out lower tier stuff. Uh, this week we are taking on Beard, coach of the New York Aqua Jets. Um, <clears throat> if you guys haven't really been around on the channel very long, him and I are pretty close friends and have a couple of pretty entertaining battles on the channel actually. Uh, most of which have seemed to go in my favor lately, but I'm definitely not taking him lightly because he knows my playstyle extremely well, um, gets in my head pretty well, and also has a lot of like familiar and unfamiliar threats, I guess. Um, I should have probably took any notes <laughs> on this, but I'm kind of trying to wing it this week because I don't really have a ton of time to record, um, and this battle is kind of long. Um, so. I'll go ahead and preview my team first. Uh, first up, we have Musharna uh, making season debut uh, with Psychic Terrain, Moonlight, Trick Room, and Psyshock with the Terrain Extender. Um, I told y'all I was going to be running it um, in my draft recap, um, and seeing as how I put this team together in about 20 minutes or so, maybe, um, I decided that this week would be a good week to bring it. Um, his team that he brought is actually pretty resistant to the Slurpuff that I brought, um, which is the Citrus Berry Unburdened set that I basically bought last week. Um, I switched Facade for Return this week because I just wanted to do a little bit more damage. Uh, Belly Drum, Play Rough, and Drain Punch is the rest of the set if you didn't watch last week's battle. Um, but seeing as how he has Dewblade and Weezing and uh, Verizion, which could outspeed it, um, but Dewblade and Weezing especially just like don't really take anything from it. Um, I expected Dewblade to come, but I was a little surprised to see Weezing, so uh, Slurpuff's probably going to be sitting in the back again a lot this week. Um, then we have Steelix with Leftover, Sturdy, Stealth, Rock, Protect, Gyro Ball, and Earthquake. Um, again, pretty similar to last week, but um, it had a lot of success last week, um, and I figured I could just keep trying to go with it, I guess. Um, Similarly, Alolomola has a pretty um, pretty much identical moveset, I guess, now that I look at it. Uh, leftovers, Wish Protect, Toxic, and knock or Scald instead of Knock Off this week. Um, I wanted to get a chance at a burn on Dewblade, which would be nice. Um, I figured I could just basically invest the rest in defense and take him on pretty well. Um, but honestly, Dewblade's kind of scary for my team, so I was not really... Um, too excited to let it get like a swords dance or two up so I wanted to um, not be as passive I guess. Um, next up is Kamo O. Um, choice Scarf this week with Flamethrower, Ice Punch, Close Combat, and Poison Jab. Um, again Flamethrowers for Dewblade, Ice Punch, Close Combat, and Poison Jab pretty much hit the rest of his team. Um, the only thing I don't really hit that well is Weezing I guess um, but again I wasn't really expecting him to bring it so whatever. Um, and finally, we have Archeops making his season debut, I guess. Um, no item, so I can run Earthquake, Rock Slide, Acrobatics, and Roost. Um, Acrobatics is a move, if you don't know, which is base 55 and then doubles if you don't have an item. Uh, normally, this is when you like use an item, <laughs> um, but... Oh, okay. <laughs> I got an alert from Shadow saying the server was restarting, but I don't think that'll really matter for the replay. Um, but yeah, um, Acrobatics is a move that starts at 55 and then doubles if you don't have an item. Uh, typically you use an item before this, so I could have put like a Citrus Berry or something on this if I wanted to. Um, but honestly, base 110 speed's really nice and I wanted to kind of just be able to come in and nuke something if I uh, wanted to. Um, so he brought Samrock, Verizion, Dewblade, Zoroark, Weezing, and Alolan Raichu. Um, he left behind Dredagon, Dodrio, Gligar, Gramble, Swine and Flareon. Um, honestly, <laughs> I kind of expected uh, Verizion, Dewblade, and Zoroark, and I know he really likes Alolan Raichu, so I was kind of expecting those four. Um, I didn't really prep very much Slash at all for Samurott, and I prepped a little bit, but probably not as much as I should have for Weezing. Um, I immediately, as soon as I got into the battle, was like, well, I guess I should have run Psychic to try to hit Weezing a lot harder instead of Psyshock. Uh, but that happens sometimes when you build without practice, I guess. Um, but one thing I noticed um, is that he doesn't have any way of removing hazards. So the second I get rocks up, it's pretty uh, nice chip for his entire team. Uh, so I will lead Steelix as he leads Weezing. Um, I'm fearing a flamethrower or a will-o'-wisp at this point. Uh, so I want to just play it safe and go into Lolomola. Um, I don't know if he'd reveal that turn one, but he just goes into Samurott. 
Um, I'm pretty okay uh, with getting uh, Toxic off here. Um, I don't want this thing to be Sword Stance and set up on me. <laughs> so I go for the Toxic as he switches into Verizion. Um, obviously, I'm a Water type against a Grass type, so I don't really want to stay in on a Giga Drain. Um, but he reads that well and goes for his Zen Headbutt instead. Um, I am able to kill here with an Ice Punch. Um, but it's kind of risky for me to stay in at this point because if he is Scarf, um, he'll outspeed my Scarf because he's a lot faster. Uh, so I'm going to risk it at this point, but I probably shouldn't have uh, because he had a pretty safe switch into Dewblade. Um, I can switch into Steelix off of that because Dewblade can't really touch Steelix at all. Um, I don't really remember offhand. Uh, yeah, it has base 45 special attack, <laughs> and Steelix doesn't really take any damage from the physical side, even when you don't really invest it, so um, I was kind of expecting this to pretty much be a hard wall, um, so I can get rocks up now for free, which is nice, um, and while I'm expecting this thing to be able to hit me somehow, um, because uh, <laughs> I don't know why he would have brought it in against me otherwise, um, I am up to sturdy, so it, there's really no reason for me to not uh, just fire off an earthquake here. Um, he actually lands a focus blast and gets a crit to knock me down to my sturdy. I don't know if the crit really mattered, but I'm able to wipe him out with the earthquake anyway, which is nice. Um, I only have four attack investments, so it's really nice that I was able to come through with that much. Um, so at this point, um, he actually goes Zoroark here and it's not disguised, and I kind of want to explain why. Um, so, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, Zoroark has an ability um, called Illusion. Uh, I actually showed it off a couple of times on my channel because I had uh, Zoroark franchised for two seasons in the NES. Uh, but basically, it, <laughs> it acts as an illusion on the sixth member of your boat party. Um, so in the beginning of the battle, you get to like set your party order, and Zoroark will basically just copy whatever's at the end and make it look like that. Um, I'm guessing that Beard set Zoroark to look like a Alolan Raichu, um, probably with Zoroark as slot 5 and Alolan Raichu as slot 6. Um, but when Raichu died, Zoroark kind of just slid into the last slot. Um, so, Beard, if you're watching this, <laughs> um, generally when you're setting Zoroark parties, um, it's a better idea to have Zoroark second, um, so that way it disguises um, a little bit easier, I guess. Because <laughs> that way, if the sixth member of your party dies, it'll just disguise as the fifth member or whatever. Uh, but <laughs> it's, that was just an aside uh, since it came up during the battle, and I was a little focused and didn't really want to talk about it then. Um, so I'm going to go for a Protect just to get a little bit more chip and see what he wants to go for. Um, I don't really have very much that wants to switch into a Dark Pulse, so I just go Lola Mola, which as you can see is not really a counter like it is with Druid Generator, but not really. Um, I see that he's not Scarfed here though, or Specs, which is nice. Um, I kind of figured he wasn't Specs because I thought that would have done a little bit more, uh, but it's nice to see that he's not Choiced, because uh, that means um, Archeops outspeeds and after Unburden, uh, Slurpuff definitely will. Um, and he shows U-turn, which isn't really going to do very much damage, so I'm just going to go ahead and fire off a Wish and try to get something <laughs> up to full health here. Um, he goes Brizion, which is scary, because, again, I don't really want to stay in against this thing, but I also don't really have the best switches to it. Um, playing it safe, um, I was about to go Musharna here and just set up a Trick Room or a Psychic Terrain and just kind of get going with that. Um, but I wanted to play a little bit more aggressive with this because um, I figured I would be able to live this a little bit better than I am. Uh, so I'm actually going to go Archeops here. I didn't calc during the battle, so I didn't really see how close this was going to be. Um, it doesn't matter because I get wished back up to full, but that was a little bit riskier than I probably should have taken it. Um, so even though it's not really like going to do a ton of damage to what I'm expecting to switch in here um, with the Dewblade, I'm going to go for the Acrobatics. Um, and just try to get damage off on something, hopefully. Um, he confirms that he's Scarf, though, so now I'm in the Fetus. <laughs> um, I still managed to kill because it's four times super effective, um, and I'd still basically have base 70 attack, so it's not like it's like the end of the world to be in the Fetus, I guess. Um, and here, I realize that my only chance of roosting against his team um, is to basically do it against Zoroark, where I'm just going to take a Dark Pulse after anyway. 
uh, Weasening, where I'm probably going to take a Will-O-Wisp and then not be able to attack him. Or Samurott, who likely has Aqua Jet at this point. He hasn't shown it, but I'm pretty sure he does. Um, so at this point, I figure I might as well just go for a Roost here if he tries to get greedy and like Toxic me or something on a Switch. Because um, then I can Roost back up and just go for an Earthquake or Switch out if I want to. Uh, he does the right thing and shows Shadow Sneak, which is fine. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go Como over here. Um, no reason not to try to fire off a flamethrower. Um, I know it's a little predictable for me to go straight into it, but I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. Unfortunately, he shows protect, so he knows it's coming, which kind of sucks, so I just switch out. <laughs> um, he reads that well, though, and goes for a toxic. Um, I think it was a little risky for him to stay in at that point, but he read me well, uh, because I'm pretty sure Flamethrower would have done at least like 40 or 50%. Um, and once this thing goes down, like, Weezing is a switch in to Slurpuff, but Return's still gonna do a ton of damage, so, um, I'm fine with trying to get damage on, uh, Dewblade, but, of course, I tried to play it safe there and got kind of burned for it. Um, so, I, his Shadow Sneak's not gonna do anything, so I'm just gonna go for a Wish. Um, I'm playing Risky because I don't think he has Sword Stance at this point, because he's Toxic Protect. Um, so I just try to get my Steelix back up to full, uh, because I see that his Shadow Sneak is only gonna do like 7% or something to Steelix, maybe. Um, so I actually catch him on a Switch, which is even better, because that means I get all the way back up to 94, um, after Leftovers, which means that I can Protect, and then get back up to Sturdy. Uh, so Steelix went from 100% to 1% and is all the way back up to full, um, after this next turn. Um, and so also let me scout if he has Flamethrower. Uh, but even better, it scouts that this is actually Zoroark. Um, I get a little unlucky and only get 5% back with my leftovers, but um, I'm still technically able to take a hit here um, if I want to. <laughs> um, I don't really want to though because I figure that he's going to go for a Dark Pulse. It actually does a little bit more than I wanted it to do, um, but that's okay. Um, I actually expected him to uh, read close combat here and go Dewblade, trying to fire off a Flamethrower. Um, it does 38, because Zoroark actually has, like, adequate bulk, I guess. Um, and then I guess Beard forgot, or didn't know that I was Bulletproof, um, uh, and Bulletproof Box Sludge Bomb. Um, one of the cool things about Como, I guess. <laughs> um, I think he was reading me to double into Slurpuff there, um, but that would have been a little bit risky, I guess, because Dewblade's still very healthy and <laughs> kind of can completely wall my Slurpuff, I guess. Um, so... I ended up just going for the flamethrower because I thought he was going to double into Dewblade on my predicted close combat. Turns out that I end up getting kind of lucky anyway. Um, flamethrower is still not going to kill here, um, but I'm just going to double into Steelix because I don't really expect him to stay in. Um, now I'm back up to full and Samurott's in. Um, I'm not really tripping about Samurott, so I'm just going to go into my Lollamola. Um, he fires off a Scald, which is fine. Um, I'm not Spideff invested, so... Um, it's actually doing like a fairly decent amount of damage, but I can still try to wish pass into stuff. Um, I decided to play it safe here though, because I don't want to get my Choice Scarfer burned. Uh, so I'm finally going to go Musharna um, and just try to start doing damage to stuff, I guess. Um, he shows that he's Scald and Ice Beam, which is fine. Um, I mainly set Psychic Terrain there, so I can start... Um, not being as scared of Shadow Sneak if I can get into um, Slurpuff at any point. Um, I actually expected him to go Dewblade uh, directly on my Musharna, um, and I thought Shadow Sneak might have been his only coverage to hit me, so I wanted to go Psychic Terrain um, on his switch and then be able to um, set up a Moonlight or something after. Um, he didn't really let me do that, so it was fine. Um, so <laughs> I'm basically just going back and forth between a little mole trying to heal up my stuff. Um, trying to stall him a little bit more. <laughs> um, I'm playing a little passive as well as aggressive, just trying to switch into stuff over and over again. Um, I get lucky and end up reading it right um, on that turn. Um, him alternating between Scald and Ice Beam made it pretty hard for me to switch into Como freely. Um, but luckily I caught him on a turn where he thought I was going to stay in and protect, so he went for a Scald. Um, but I was able to eat that, not get burned, thankfully, <laughs> uh, which means that I can fire off a close combat here if I want to. Um, I predicted him to go for the Ice Beam though, so trying to get back up a little bit healthier. Uh, this Toxic is kind of annoying, so I kind of just have to keep wish stalling here. Um, missing that Toxic is kind of annoying too, if I'm being honest. Um, 
Because obviously the Samurott is proving to be a little bit more annoying than I gave it credit for. Um, it's kind of just firing off Scalds and Ice Beams over and over again. But right now, uh, nothing on my team really wants to take a Scald or an Ice Beam. Um, I don't want to switch into Steelix because it's just going to get wiped back. Uh, Como O doesn't really want to switch into either a Scald or Ice Beam, even though it resists because it doesn't want to get burned. Um, I'm going to have to try to risk it again, though, because <laughs> this is a situation I set myself up for. Um, and I just let a little mole drop so I can get the free switch in combo here. Uh, fire off a close combat, surprisingly, it doesn't actually kill. Um, and then the ice beam does, so even after all that, it didn't really matter. Uh, so I'm just going to go back into Musharna and try to set up uh, terrain and stuff again. Um, just again, because I thought Dewblade was coming in and that would have been the only way to hit. Um, <sighs> Unfortunately, <laughs> he actually uh, had Samurott as his last member and then doubles into Zoroark, who is disguised as Samurott. Um, a lot of people don't actually know this, but Zoroark regains its disguise upon switching out, and depending on how you play the rest of the game, it'll actually like redisguise itself as something else. Um, so one of the things that even a lot of Zoroark players like don't really know, I guess, um, is that you can continuously change what Zoroark's disguised as. So your opponent doesn't just get like, oh, okay, he has Zoroark disguised as Samurott, so anytime Samurott comes in, I should probably be careful or something like that. Um, like, just as an aside, I guess. Because <laughs> this is the first time I've actually played Zoroark on the channel. Like, I've had it as a Pokemon that I've used, obviously, but this is the first time I've played it as an opponent, I guess. Um, so I'm going to set up Psychic Drain as well as Trick Room at this point, uh, because he's clearly not going to do Blade for some reason. Uh, so I might as well, oh, I'm just kidding, that's actually not happening yet. Um, that's in a little bit. Um, so now he goes real, um, Samurott here. Um, I could stay in and go for an Earthquake, but it's pretty obvious that he's just going to go for an attack here. Um, so now I'm going to set up the Trick Room <laughs> after a Moonlight, I guess. Um, it's coming, I promise. I think I just wanted to get a little healthy verse. There it is. Um, so now I actually outspeed um, his entire team at this point, actually. Um, unless Deep Blade is, um, actually I'm pretty sure I outspeed Deep Blade anyway, um, cause Mishana's base 29 and I'm in speed, uh, 0 IV. Um, so unfortunately I have Psy Shock instead of Psychic, so that's not as cool as it could have been. Um, he goes Deep Blade, which means that I basically have to switch out. Um, luckily I have another Trick Room Abuser in Steelix, so I can just kind of fire off an Earthquake. Um, he's stalling out Trick Room, but honestly it doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, cause... Um, he still hasn't really shown anything to hit me with at this point. Um, late game Toxic Spikes is interesting um, because it does kind of slow down Musharna um, and it does make Slurpuff a little harder to use, I guess. Um, given the fact that um, two of his biggest like Slurpuff counters are still alive and still pretty much at full, um, Slurpuff's probably becoming one of the more useless members of the team this week. Um, so at this point I'm kind of expecting Mishrana to wear stuff down and then Steelix to kind of clean up, I guess. <laughs> um, especially since Steelix has Dirty still and isn't affected by Toxic Spikes since it's a uh, Steel type, which is nice. Um, so I switch into Mishrana as Trick Room ends. Um, he goes for the Toxic. Um, Synchronize doesn't work because he's already a Poison type. Um, Psych Shock still actually does pretty decent damage even outside of Psychic Terrain, which is kind of cool. Um, if I set Psychic Terrain, it actually would have done 1.5 and would have been a pretty solid 2 at KO, I think. Um, but I didn't, I guess. <laughs> um, so he goes for Toxic Spikes as I go for another Psy Shock. I'm kind of expecting him to switch, but I need to whittle this thing down anyway. Um, so eventually he does switch, um, as I kind of predict it and able to get back up a little bit more. Um, as it's done all game, I just go Steelix because hasn't really shown any reason to hit me yet. <laughs> um, and I almost get back up to Sturdy despite the Shadow Sneak there. Um, so I should have probably just gone for a Gyro Ball there predicting the switch, but it wouldn't have really done very much to... Um... Oh. <laughs> so I kind of uh, wanted to let that turn play out, but I guess I should have probably talked, it over, or talked over it. Um, so I could have gone for an Earthquake here and done... Uh, pretty decent damage to Dewblade, which is more what I was concerned about at this point, because Steelix is basically dead. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't see this coming at all, and I didn't calc at all, um, but he goes for a Destiny Bond here, and because of the Black Sludge recovery that he actually got the previous turn, 
Um, I'm pretty much spared losing my Steelix and my Wincon at this point. Um, if he wouldn't have had Black Sludge, or if he would have come in a turn later or something like that and gone for Destiny Bond, um, it basically would have been up to <laughs> Musharna with Psy Shock and, um, and my Slurpuff with play rough basically to try to take down Dewblade, which was not happening. <laughs> um, so I got extremely lucky here and got the roll in my favor to actually end up living here. Um, he could go for a Destiny Bond again, um, but I think he's willing to not risk that. Um, so he predicted me to go um, into Slurpuff there, I guess. Um, but at this point, it's basically a uh, game over. Um, <laughs> so he goes for the Dark Pulse, which would have been a two-hit KO, but luckily Earthquake's an Oko. Um, as he's shown all game, Shadow Sneak's not really doing anything. I'm basically recovering back what he's doing in Shadow Sneak damage as I'm doing 20% to him. Um, 25 actually, which is actually a pretty ridiculous amount to do Blade because it's very naturally defensive. Like I think it has base 140 and is holding in a Violite still. Um, so, a couple of things. First of all, Steelix is awesome. Uh, it's pretty limited in like its coverage and what it can actually do as a tier 5 wall. Uh, but as a tier 5 wall, Steel types are awesome to have as walls because they can't be toxic, obviously with all the toxic spikes around me. Um, sitting in here and just firing off earthquakes with any other kind of wall uh, would have meant that I lost at that point. Uh, Secondly, Sturdy is awesome because it allowed me to basically take a hit from a level one Raichu, even a crit, kill it off, and then eventually recover all the way back up and then have the security of basically having a Focus Sash and not being able to be O-Code by anything. Um, technically, uh, Beard played that about as well as he could have. Um, if he got a little bit lucky with Zoroark and got a flinch on that last turn, uh, where he was actually trying to do like the two hit or two hit KO, um, game could have probably played out a little bit differently. Um, I think at that point I would have actually had to go hard Slurpuff and just try to set up and hope that it did something. Um, but this is one of the longer battles we've actually had on the channel in a while. Um, I probably should have taken notes to be a little bit more organized because there was definitely a little bit in there <laughs> where I was kind of just knowing something was happening but not knowing when. Um, but I'm pretty happy with this team so far. We're 2-0 at plus 8, which I believe is best in the league right now. Um, next week we take on Fluga, coach of the Hamilton Rycats. Uh, we played them last season, and honestly, I kind of want revenge for how I played last season because our battles are always really, really close. And uh, ironically enough, I didn't prefer Weezing at all in that battle either and got bodied. So uh, good news is that I don't have to worry about Weezing anymore this season. Uh, bad news is Fluga also has a very scary team that's um, also undefeated, I think. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you guys like this battle as well as anything else you've seen on the channel, I guess, <laughs> drop a like and subscribe. Um, again, if you guys see any of my Pokemon and you kind of want to suggest sets, uh, feel free. Um, I'm pretty inexper inexperienced uh, with a lot of the Pokemon on my roster this season um, and just trying to look to learn, I guess. <laughs> so have a good one and I will see you guys later.